Welcome to my Secret Lab Titan Evo 2022 review. As a professional gamer that sits down in chairs often, I feel that my opinion here is going to be worth a lot as I hardly ever get out of my chair. Is it comfortable enough to help ease the aches and pains of adulthood? First off, thank you to Secret Lab for sending this chair out to me. We did tell them that this is going to be a 100% honest review and they replied saying that they didn't expect anything less. Secondly, I've owned other gaming chairs before. I've had a Maxonomic or known as Need for Seat Cloud9 chair, don't ask, and a Vertigear one. I have also sat in a few others as well during my lucrative esports career, so my buttocks have standards. I'll break the review down into sections more for this one, so it's a little bit more digestible. The chair comes in three sizes. This one is the regular one, which is for people between a height of 170 to 189 centimeters and weigh less than 100 kilograms. There is a size guide on the website, and all you have to do is put your height and weight into it, and it will suggest the best size for you. Putting this together was painless, the other chairs I have assembled always seem to have a point where it got a bit sketchy, areas where some parts felt a bit too stiff to get into place when tightening bolts, or there was a fear that when connecting the back and the bottom together it would close up and cut your fingers off. Here it was very easy and well explained, they even have the reclining lever locked at the start so you can't accidentally maim yourself. Thanks guys. It did take a while to put together and I do recommend that you do this with two people just because it's heavy. Don't forget to follow the novelty size instructions that come provided. The tools that also come with it are very high quality which makes tightening easier as there's more clearance and you can get a better grip on the actual tools themselves. You get 4D armrests which have a range of movement. They go up, down, side to side, forwards, backwards and even turn inside and outside. They are nice as big as well so they support the whole arm. The levers, flaps and buttons that are used to control these movements are very well made. Some of the other chairs I've used kind of cheap out in this section. There is a bit of movement to them though so they do rattle in place. The other thing I found is that when I prop myself up in the armrest to move around the chair they can sometimes flip off when I do so. They are kept on with magnets which is probably the reason as to why. They're magnetic because they have something called the cloud swap technology. Now there's only one alternative available so I'm not sure what the whole point of this is really but basically it means that you can just lift these off and put on another set. But there's only really one other option available. If there were many other various options of maybe different size, thickness, I could maybe see that this is a reasonable feature. But there's only one as I said and you have to pay more for the other version and there's no real way of knowing how comfortable they are unless they were to send me some. The back is pretty comfortable and also unlike the others that I've used it is very clean to look at. The Maxonomic and Vertica chairs I've had always had a lumbar support or headrest that you've had to attach with straps and it was a bit of a pain and it got quite messy. The lumbar support here is built in so using some knobs on the left and right side of the chair you can move it around for your comfort. It's a good idea but I think personally the lumbar support is a bit flat. Also you can move it up and down and that's the other part that I feel that I can't really tell a great difference in. If I lessen the lumbar support you can actually notice the difference but changing the heights doesn't seem to have any effect. Regardless though it is still comfortable for my back which tend to get a bit sore on some other chairs. You get a headrest on this one that is connected to the top using magnets. I love me some wizardry. It's a memory foam one and it has some cooling gel in it as well. It is very nice and as it says it is very cool to rest your head on and very comfortable. The 2020 version of the Titan also had the strap on the headrest so that's an improvement that this 2022 version has. The bottom seat I do wish was more comfortable, by that I mean it was a bit softer. I find that after a few hours my buttocks require something with a bit more sponginess to it but that might be related to there not being as much meat on my bones. Something that I do like here is the design of the seat, they refer to it as their pebble design. This is so that you have room to move but it also guides you back to the centre of the seat to maintain some comfort. On some other gamer chairs that I've used it's more of a bucket seat with quite high walls on the side. These can create a bit of a cavity and then there's a breeding ground for well anything really, Doritos, pizza crust, dips, you name it, it will get stuck there. This makes cleaning a pain and honestly makes you feel and look like a degenerate whenever someone or you looks at your chair. The chair also has a good range of adjustments being able to tilt very far back which with the memory foam headrest is very comfortable so much though that I have been able to have a little nap in it. You also get a nice amount of vertical movement as well. You can go very low and also be able to go high enough so that my feet come off the floor. It's like I'm in one of those big chairs at the hairdressers. The combination of the armrests having a lot of vertical movement 
There's a lot of options here to get the chair into a comfortable position for you. I have it quite high so I can let my feet swing off the chair. One thing that bugged me with the other chairs is this false leatherette. Now, I can't say much here because it's winter, but the other chairs that had this leatherette got very uncomfortable during summer months. I'm in a very small room, so when I'm gaming during this point, it's time to whip the shirt off and other bits of attire. And you know, after a few hours when I have to get up, it's like ripping off Velcro of my skin. Now, this is a soft weave fabric, so it's not the leatherette, so it might not have the same issue. They do say that the soft weave fabric will stay cool in the summer. Summer. Hopefully so, but anyway, I could do a follow-up review after the summer if that's interesting enough. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, the quality here is really good. The stitching is very secure with seemingly no points of weakness or areas where it looks like it could tear easily. I have been using this for about a month now and I am a knee up gamer or a sit on the foot kind of guy as well, so it resists my gremlin type body shape. Now I'm mentioning this because I feel like it's important to have fit included in reviews. With the other chairs I've had, and I've already spoken about the gaps on the seat which can collect dirt, but also between the bottom seat and the back, that area could also get very tight, which again made it very hard to get your hand in and give it a clean. Here, as there's a small gap, it's not really as tight to the bottom, so it's easy to get a hoover nozzle in it to clean it, and you can also just give it a wipe as well. There's only really one place that can collect dust, and that's around the swivel area but you just have to undo one screw and you can just hoover up the dust within. I honestly think this is really important to make things easy to clean and maintain just because it will help it last longer and then you're just not disgusting either. Now this is just a small warning as with most gaming chairs, the box is massive and I mean massive, I could honestly live in it. On the box it also talks about the testing they've done to make sure that your chair is safe on its way to you. It is a bit much on the plastics as well but I guess maybe the guarantee that it arrives safely is probably the important part anyway. So the cost of these do vary depending on the sizing of which finish you choose. This regular one with soft weave fabric would cost around $490 or £370 or €469 Euros at the time of this review. They do only ship directly so they aren't available through third party retailers. They do mention how much it would cost if they were to set it through a third party as well though. My overall thoughts are that this is a good gaming chair. It is a bit pricey but I will be honest the quality on this is outstanding. There's a lot of attention to detail and innovative ideas so you feel like you're getting a product that Secret Lab have really tried to make the best. The other bonus as well is that you get a 3 year warranty. A lot of other companies, at least from what I've found, only give you 2 years. And you can also extend it by another 2 years by either paying around $50 or 42 euros or like 35 quid or for free by posting it on Twitter which is a good deal with little effort. Even paying for the warranty extension is good enough for me. I feel personally that warranty is a good benchmark for how long they'd like you to have the chair for. So I can highly recommend this chair. Quality costs money and you are getting a high quality chair that I would honestly pay for. It might sting at first spending the money but the sting will go away after a few weeks for sure. That's all for this review. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the box below. If you're interested in purchasing the product, there will be a link in the description that you can use that will directly support us if you make a purchase. Goodbye and I'll see you next time.